reusability. It's what sets SpaceX apart from the rest. While we've seen them master this with the Falcon 9 booster, did you know they've also achieved remarkable reusability with fairings? Yes, SpaceX has taken fairing recovery to a whole new level, driving both cost savings and efficiency. But what's even more impressive is the ingenious way they've improved their recovery method, revolutionizing the process yet again. So how exactly has SpaceX enhanced its Falcon rocket fairing recovery technique? And just how crucial is fairing reuse for SpaceX and the aerospace industry as a whole? Let's dive in and find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. For those who closely follow SpaceX, we've become accustomed to the incredible sight of Falcon 9 boosters landing, either returning to solid ground at landing zones or touching down on drone ships in the ocean. But booster recovery isn't the only reusability milestone SpaceX has achieved. There is another key component they've been quietly perfecting, fairing recovery. Fairings, the protective shells that encapsulate a rocket's payload during ascent, are often overlooked. These two-piece structures separate once the rocket reaches the appropriate altitude, allowing the payload to deploy. In the early days, SpaceX, like most other aerospace companies, discarded fairings entirely, letting them burn up in the atmosphere or fall into the ocean. But as SpaceX pushed for greater reusability, they saw an opportunity to recover and reuse them, saving millions of dollars per launch. However, retrieving fairings is no easy feat. Musk himself acknowledged this, stating, this was actually very difficult to recover the fairing. SpaceX's VP Kiko Donchev also emphasized the challenges. Unlike boosters, which operate for only a few minutes before returning from medium altitudes, fairings accompany the rocket for most of its journey and must endure an intense re-entry process. This makes recovery significantly harder. While the Falcon 9 booster relies on a controlled descent with landing burns, grit fins, and legs, fairings rely solely on parachutes to slow their descent. Even with parachutes, their return can be unpredictable due to weather conditions, winds, and ocean currents. Initially, SpaceX attempted a bold approach using specialized ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief, equipped with massive nets to catch the descending fairings before they hit the water. This had a major advantage. Keeping the fairings out of contact with seawater reduced the need for refurbishment, making reuse easier. However, this method required extreme precision. The fairings, descending under parachutes, could be easily thrown off course by shifting winds. Meanwhile, the ships being relatively small were highly susceptible to rough seas, making it even harder to position the nets correctly. The entire process proved far too complex and unreliable, with a success rate of less than 20%. Realizing the limitations of this approach, SpaceX decided to simplify the process, a hallmark of their engineering philosophy. Kiko Donchev later confirmed that the company gave up on net catching and transitioned to a more straightforward method, allowing the fairings to land in the ocean and then retrieving them with large ships equipped with cranes. This shift perfectly embodies Musk's belief that the best process is no process. Instead of trying to catch fairings mid-air, SpaceX simply lets them splash down and recovers them afterward. Surprisingly, seawater exposure doesn't cause significant corrosion as the fairings float like small boats, keeping critical internal components such as electrical systems largely protected. More importantly, this method has an extremely high success rate, ensuring that SpaceX can reliably reuse fairings without the risks and complexities of aerial recovery. Some might view this change as a step backward, but it's actually a testament to SpaceX's iterative approach to problem solving. They tested a method, learned from its limitations, and adapted to a more effective solution. Without those early attempts, they wouldn't have discovered the optimal way forward. This is exactly what sets SpaceX apart. Relentless innovation, continuous testing, rapid improvements, and ultimately, game-changing success. The impact of SpaceX's fairing recovery program is undeniable, and the numbers speak for themselves. Musk once summed up its significance by saying, you have six million bucks falling from the sky, referring to the fact that each Falcon fairing set costs six million. 
While this might seem like a small fraction of the total launch cost, especially compared to the booster, which accounts for nearly half, the savings add up fast. During his 2024 Starbase presentation, Musk revealed a staggering statistic. So it costs an immense amount of effort, um, but we now quite regularly recover the fairing, and we've uh, reflown fairings 300 times. That means with 300 successful fairing recoveries, SpaceX has already saved an estimated 1.8 billion U.S. dollars. To put that into perspective, 1.8 billion dollars could fund nearly 30 Falcon 9 missions or 12 Falcon Heavy flights. If SpaceX achieves its goal of $2 million per Starship launch, that same amount could theoretically fund 900 Starship flights, a staggering figure for a fully reusable vehicle. Alternatively, it could be used to manufacture 1,800 Raptor engines, each costing about a million dollars to produce. These savings are crucial, allowing SpaceX to reinvest in groundbreaking projects like Starship, which is key to the company's long-term vision of Mars colonization. Meanwhile, competitors like NASA's SLS and ULA's Vulcan, both reliant on costly expendable hardware, can only envy SpaceX's cost efficiency. And that $1.8 billion estimate? It's already outdated. By early 2024, SpaceX had conducted 134 Falcon launches, meaning the number of fairing recoveries has likely climbed to 400 or even 500. You can do the math. SpaceX's savings are only going to grow as their launch cadence accelerates. In the future, alongside booster recovery, SpaceX's Falcon 9 will likely set even more records, serving as a powerful inspiration for other SpaceX systems and the entire aerospace industry. One of the most important impacts of Falcon 9's reusability is how it lays the groundwork for full reusability with Starship. Some might think this connection is weak since Starship's design is vastly different from Falcon rockets. Unlike Falcon, Starship has no separate fairings. It carries payloads internally in a dedicated cargo bay. When SpaceX recovers a Starship upper stage, it's not just a component, it's the entire vehicle. That's why Starship represents true full reusability, something Falcon can't fully achieve. However, Falcon 9's fairing recovery is still a key stepping stone towards Starship's development. Like Falcon's fairings, Starship's upper stage must endure re-entry, navigate through the atmosphere, and execute a controlled landing. So far, SpaceX has tested this process multiple times, with Flight 6 being the most successful. While Flights 7 and 8 introduced significant upgrades with Starship version 2, we haven't yet seen another full re-entry attempt, but I'm confident that future flights will bring us one step closer. Once Starship's landing process is mastered, SpaceX will move forward with its Mechazilla recovery system, catching Starship and Super Heavy directly at the launch site. This will not only achieve full reusability, but also enable unprecedented turnaround speeds. The success of Falcon's boosters and fairings has already proven that reusability is the key to lowering costs and increasing launch frequency, which will drive Starship's evolution even further. But Falcon 9's impact doesn't stop at SpaceX. It's setting a new standard for reusability across the entire aerospace industry. One of the most promising companies following in SpaceX's footsteps is Rocket Lab. They're developing Neutron, a rocket that takes a unique approach to reusability, especially in its fairing design. Unlike Falcon, Neutron's fairings are semi-fixed. Instead of detaching, they stay connected to the rocket and open like a shark's jaw to deploy the payload. This design allows for quicker recovery and refurbishment, at least in theory. Rocket Lab has been the second most active launch provider for years. While they're still far from reaching SpaceX's level, it's clear that Falcon 9's success has inspired them to innovate. If Neutron performs well, it could become a fascinating competitor, not just to Falcon 9, but potentially even to Starship. Of course, surpassing SpaceX's rockets is an enormous challenge, but competition fuels progress. And together, these companies could push the U.S. aerospace industry into a new era of spaceflight. Rocket Lab isn't just focused on developing Neutron. They're also strengthening their Electron rocket, which remains a key part of their launch business. 
Recently, they successfully launched an exciting mission with Electron. At 8 p.m. Eastern on the 14th of January, Rocket Lab and Limina, Rocket Lab launched an Earth observing radar imaging satellite called QPS SAR 9 into a 575 kilometer orbit. This satellite, manufactured by the Japanese company IQPS, is part of a growing constellation designed to provide high-resolution Earth monitoring. The mission was named the Lightning God Reigns. I wonder how that would sound in Japanese. As its name suggests, this satellite utilizes synthetic aperture radar, or SAR for short, technology to capture detailed images of Earth's surface, regardless of weather conditions or time of day. Following the mission, Rocket Lab wrote, the spacecraft will join IQPS's growing Earth imaging constellation that delivers high-resolution monitoring from specific locations every 10 minutes. This launch marks just the first of eight planned missions for IQPS in 2025, and 2026 as they work to expand their satellite network. For Rocket Lab, this was their third launch of the year and their 61st mission overall. While their launch cadence started slower than last year due to a January gap, they are ramping up quickly. With two more missions planned for March, Rocket Lab is positioning itself for a strong year, securing its place as one of the most active players in the industry. Let's see what they accomplish next. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.